Hey guys, today I want to talk a little bit about ARK, ARK Investments. We talk about ARK ETFs quite often. Every once in a while I'll put something out there. I know a lot of people don't follow my investment advice, but some people ask me to give my views. These are my views. You know, I'm not telling you to invest in these things. I'm telling you why I invest in them, okay? And I've done pretty good. My stock, par stock market portfolio has done very well. Even my ARK Investments have done pretty good because I got in earlier than most people. So I'm happy with those. But the way I look at ARC, and I've talked about this the other day when we were, you know, when we were talking about 2022. The way I look at ARC is this. Kathy Woods invests long term. She switches in and out of things when she thinks she can get good, better buys. She'll invest out of a stock that hasn't taken much of a dip like Apple. And she'll invest it in something that took a major dip, but she knows it's going to go gr gradually back up possibly get a 50% gain or even more or something like that. And she buys all, this is how she, she fills up her, her portfolio with more and more low price stocks. So when they grow, they're gonna get big gains. Now, does that mean they're gonna gain right away? Hell no, if anything, you're gonna have more of a, a dippy ride along the way. You're gonna have big gains and big losses in some days. And that's, that's what you have to consider. You have to be able to take the ride. Otherwise, you don't get on the roller coaster. If you can't take those big dips and you can't take that ride, don't get into the stock market, okay? But over the long term, guess what? I think you're going to have some huge gains in ARK investments. And it depends on which one you're in. And you have to decide that. I like all of them. I like all of them, to be honest with you. I think all her investments are great investments. She knows what to get into. She knows what she's, t she's talking about. In fact... She's part of the next subject I'm gonna get into. Tesla, okay? One of the things, people that got me into Tesla was Kathy Woods. I heard her talking about all these gains that, that um, she thought Tesla was gonna get all the way up until like 2030. Massive, massive gains, and I'm thinking, can a stock really do that? Do I wanna miss out on that? And some people are saying, well, you know, Steve, Tesla's at the top, it's overpriced. I don't think it's overpriced. I, I, I understand the P&E ratio and all that. So I, I, I get all that stuff. And I, I think people are wrong on that. Okay, because here's why. Elon Musk has so many things in his back pocket to pull out for that company that that company is not going away soon. In fact, if anything, it's going to grow with all the new ideas that it has with solar, with batteries, with cars, uh, ATVs for kids and many other things, robots, all this stuff, phones. I think you're gonna, you're gonna see them come out to be like a huge Apple company possibly for phones. And they'll be using Starlink or something like that for their phones. He's not stupid, he's a smart man. I think he's our new Tesla. And that's a great name for that company because I look at Elon Musk like, like our, a Tesla sort of guy. It's a once in a lifetime thing that somebody like that comes along and changes the world like Elon Musk okay this guy is super super smart nobody can take that away from Elon Musk he's a very intelligent smart man and his ideas are changing the world already look at the EV market people are getting away from the combustion engines and stuff like that. I understand when you go to charge your car you're using a, a coal-powered plant but sometimes you're using a solar powered plant but you know what they're more efficient and more, more effective for, for, for um, saving on pollution when they do do it that way. Okay, so when you charge your car up and it's coming from a coal-powered plant or something like that, you know, far away from your home or whatever, it's, it's not putting out half the pollution that your car puts out. You know, when it's running on gasoline or diesel or whatever it may run on. So think of it that way. Because I was reading a story about that and that's, that's somewhat of a fact, I guess. You know, they say, they say also you have reactors. Yeah, there's all kinds of things that play into this. But a lot of, it, a lot of us have um, hydroelectric. We have uh, solar. A lot of us are putting solar panels on our roof. And we're charging our cars with those today. So a lot of people are moving away from the normal power that we normally use. And it's kind of cool watching that because the world is slowly changing. Now, the Philippines itself... We're not on that bus yet. And are we? I think slowly but surely, yes, we're, we're jumping on that bus and we're gonna go for a ride on it. But it won't be for another 20 or 30 years, probably. I, I still, people 
I still see people riding those jeepneys with the belching smoke coming out the back and the cars with the belching smoke or whatever. But you know what? I see people driving around like with the Wegos. And the Wegos are great on gas and they don't put out a lot of pollution. They're a very efficient car for, for what they do. You know, there are some good cars out there that are combustible engines and stuff like that that, that don't pollute much because they have a lot of pollution control. And the Wego is one of those cars. Toyota puts out some great cars, I, I must say. You know, as far as combustible engines and stuff like that, I think Toyota puts out some of the best cars out there, them and Honda. You know, Toyota's putting out some great cars and some of the other, you know, American car companies are too, but they, they just don't compare with Toyota. They just don't compare with, with, um, with Honda and some of the Japanese car companies. They, for some reason, those cars last longer. You can put 250, 300,000 miles on a Honda or a Toyota today. And an American car, you're lucky if you can put 150 on them, unless you would really, really baby them and take care of them. That's the problem. But anyway, guys, I want to put out there, you know, why I invest in, in these companies and what, what, I'm, what I'm looking at here. If I, was, if I was somebody out there that was getting fresh into investing or something like that, Tesla's not going, going away. Tesla's not at its top, Okay. If you got another 10 years to invest, throw some money into Tesla. It's going to split soon and it'll split again and it'll split again and you'll you'll have loads of money. I've made a lot of money, okay? I don't I'm not even sure how much I've made. I've taken some, a lot of money off the table, but what it shows in my stock stock market portfolio right now is that I'm up I think about 11,000 something dollars right now for the 7,000 that I've invested. Now I've also taken some money off the table too. I've taken some money and put it into cash or whatever. And eventually, at towards probably maybe April, I'm gonna start throwing some more money in again. And I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it this time, but I'll, I'll be sure to let you guys know where I do. I'm really looking at a lot of good companies out there and there's a lot, of, a lot more Teslas out there. Let's put it that way. There's a lot more companies that have a lot of oomph in them to push forward and to become these companies like Amazon or to become these, these, these new companies like Facebook or whatever, these huge, massive companies. I think there's a lot of companies in FinTech also that are gonna take over. FinTech is growing, it's growing in the Philippines. I'm not sure how it's doing in the United States, but I'll tell you one thing. FinTech is certainly a big thing in the Philippines for paying your bills, things like that. And I think financial tech might be a good place to put some of your money, maybe in ARK Investments. Fint they have a FinTech ARK ETF that you can put your money in and you can you guys can look it up you can you can look through all the arc investments and see what you want to invest in but guys check them out trust me you know remember i'm not a i'm not a guru okay these stocks can go up or down or something could happen or something tragic could happen these stocks could bomb tomorrow and i don't want to be responsible for that so do your do your due diligence read up on these stocks yeah, you're going to hear a lot of people say negative things about Tesla or ARK Investments or whatever. Sometimes you got to get past that and say, you know, if I had listened to people that had told me not to get into Tesla and not to get into certain investments that I get into that made me lots of money, you know where I'd be today? I'd be at ground zero still, sitting there waiting to see what I'm going to get into. If I had listened to everybody, I'm glad I didn't listen. I'm glad that I didn't listen to those people that were putting down Tesla saying Tesla stock sucks or whatever. You know, Tesla does not suck. Let's put it that way. Nor does ARK Investments. Some people, you know, I have people razzing me about ARK Investments that she hasn't done well. You know, this, th those are tech stocks. They're going to go up and down. They're going to bounce a lot more than regular stocks. Just remember that. If you can't ride the roller coaster, don't get on the ride. That's what I say. But if you want to have a fun ride and you want to make it to the top, jump on. Go for the ride. I'm on it. I'm going all the way. We'll see how it ends up. I'll bet you I end up better than the people that tell me that those, those companies suck. That's what I'm willing to bet. Anyway, guys, God bless. Take care.